Hello, this is Eric Bobro, and in this ARCHICAD tutorial, we'll take a look at the basics for creating tile work in your ARCHICAD model. This question came up today on LinkedIn when someone posted, how difficult is it to set out tiles on a wall? Now, as it turns out, I had just answered that question in a recent coaching call as part of the Best Practices course. We have several coaching calls each month, and members ask me questions about how to apply the best practices principles in practice. So in this case, I drew up a small room and put in a couple of bathroom fixtures and then started to demonstrate how you could create tile work in a variety of different ways. So let's join the call in progress. And then I'm going to create an interior elevation view. So we'll go to the document menu, put in interior elevations, a rectangular array, say I'd like to put in the interior elevations like this, and uh, let's turn off the marker range so that those extra lines disappear. All right, so now if we go to um, the interior elevations area and I go to this, let's see, uh, I'm not sure which one it would be. Um, actually, I guess can I I can select this and I can right click and say open interior elevation. That would be the quickest way. All right, so now um, let's say that I wanted to just have some tile just above the tub and only up to a certain height, you know, where the, you know, maybe you have a, a shower curtain or something like that. So one option, and, and Melissa was certainly doing this, was using the fill tool. And I, so I can pick a fill tool and I can pick, say, a grid that might represent some um, tiles. And uh, I'll just go and do this. And of course, I could measure. That. And why are we not seeing this? This is a, a little bit of a frustration. I just drew it. It did not show up. It's because it, in the display order, it was behind the other elements, which is a little bit crazy because I just drew it. It should put it in front, but I have to manually select it and bring it to the front. And now you can see here's some tile work. So this works, but one of the issues is if I go to 3D, you know, we're seeing this room and we're not seeing any tiles. Um, so while it is possible to do that, um, it's actually better to do it in a 3D mode. Now if I select the wall and um, perhaps let's just break it into pieces, um, so I'll use the option to split it um, along um, this line. And so now I've got a short piece of wall. And if I go to the um, settings for it, there's the materials for the model on the outside, which is the default walls interior or exterior, and here's the one for the inside. And perhaps if I pick one that has a tile pattern um, here, so this is not exactly a match, but it'll just be an example. I'll pick that. Um, so now if I do that here, and if I look in 3D, um, we'll see that there is now a pattern, but it's, it is from floor to ceiling. And her question was, how do I avoid that? Or how do I do it more specifically? Let's just go back to that elevation to look at that. And we'll see um, the elevation doesn't show that. And that's because the settings, and if I right click in empty space, I can look at interior elevation settings. The settings for this, for model display, do not have vectorial 3D hatching turned on. So I'm going to turn that on, say OK, and now you can see the wall as a whole has a hatch. And this thing that I was creating manually, of course, you know, is in one place. So you can do some combinations like this. And this shows up automatically as long as you have vectorial hatching turned on. It shows up automatically here. Um, if I go to the you know, 3D view, we can see that there is a tile pattern you know, if we zoom in on it close enough, you can see it you know, really sort of looks like tiles. Um, OK, so how can you do it just in a selected area? Well, probably what you need to do is to create a little thin wall that um, would uh, have uh, the tiles on it just in the area you want, which is pretty much how the thing is built. In other words, the um, tiles are applied in a certain area. And so you can create a 3D element that's only in that area. Now let me just go and get rid of the tiles here. What I'll do is I'll use the eyedropper to pick up the settings of this piece of wall and the syringe to inject it into that. So now that wall is like the other piece. Um, or I could have deleted it and stretched the original wall back 
um, the long wall back into place. So um, actually, let me just undo back there. Uh, I'm going to use the um, uh, eyedropper. Uh, the, I'll use the eyedropper to pick up the settings here. Um, and now, uh, what I'll do? I'll just do draw it over on the side of the tub um, at first. Uh, the other side. And I'll do just a single piece of wall. So right now, the wall tool. I picked up the settings, um, and if I were to just draw a wall in space like this, um, or maybe going the other way, you'd see that you know the wall has um, the tile on it. Let me just undo those last two that I picked. And let me make it just go from, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe uh, it's two feet, uh, actually going up to say, seven feet, and it starts at two feet. And I'll make it a very thin wall. Um, could be as thin as you want. I'll make it one inch just so it's not really paper thin, although tiles probably wouldn't be anywhere near that thick. And I'll just click on this point here and go to the end. And you see I've just created a piece of tile applied there. Um, now let me go and take this, I drop it and inject it in there. And now I'll go pick up the settings of this wall and I'll draw it there. So now I've got some tiles as a surround. And when I go back to the interior elevation view, um, and see, we're not seeing those tiles in there. OK, and now this is this is a setting that we need to uh, be aware of, that uh, there is a setting in interior elevations that's very special. Sometimes you have little pieces of wall that are sticking out that would get in the way of seeing an elevation. And so there's an option under the, under the interior elevation settings to, in the, under model display, to exclude view blocking walls. What that does is it says, if the interior elevation is looking at a wall surface and there's another wall in between that surface and your where you're standing, uh, do you want to just exclude it because it would block the view? In this case, I'll turn that off. When I say OK, we'll see there is that view. And let's see, we're in IE01, so probably number, number two here would be, no, let's see, maybe it's number four then. Um, oh, and we have to do the same thing in each one of these elevations, or select the whole group and turn off exclude view blocking walls. And say OK, and you know, it's interesting that this is. Oh, and then we also need to go to the interior elevation settings and say we need we'd like to show pictorial 3D hatching. So we need to show the hatching and exclude the view blocking walls. Um, and now we're seeing both of these interior elevations beautifully, you know, just the way they should be. So you would want to um, make the, these walls as, uh, uh, you know, a thickness that would be appropriate, perhaps, uh, you know, less than an inch, but whatever thickness it is. And it is possible to bury this into the main wall. Um, you know, if the tiles are really going to be flush, here's how you might do that. I'll go back to the, the, the 3D view. Um, and how, how might we do that? Um, let me zoom in on this and uh, just scroll over a little bit. So I'll take this wall. I'm going to go and press down here and say I'd like to drag it. Now, if I drag it sideways, you know, press the Shift key, you know, I've just moved it sideways. I'll undo that. Instead, I'm going to press and drag it and move it on top from one corner to the other. So now it's basically being buried into the wall. So you can see how it's now flush in the wall. Now, this can work, but it could get to be a problem because the two walls are essentially overlapping each other. So in other words, uh, both surfaces are competing in the 3D world. So what we'd want to do is use the design menu and get the solid element operations, which are found in ArcGAD 15 under the submenu called Connect. But if you're in ArcGAD 10 through 14, you'd find it directly under the design menu, solid element operations. And I basically then say, this little piece of wall is the operator. Um, actually, um, interesting thing in 15, if you have something selected when you open this up, it'll assume it's a target, which uh, I find a little bit annoying. I'm going to um, go ahead and say, this is the operator. And then I'll select the main wall 
and make it the target. And then I'll use the subtraction and execute. And now you can see that if I select the main wall, you can see it has a cutout. And if I were, if I were to do a section through this, let me just do a little temporary section just to um, show you what's going on. If I do a section um, through this uh, here, like a wall section might be typical. Um, we're actually seeing, uh, we're not seeing it because it's one inch thick. I guess let me change this to our turn off true line weight and why are we not seeing this? Oh, I guess because these two walls are exactly the same material. So in fact, there is a wall there. Let me just um, change this material. <laughs> OK. So I'm going to change the material from a background fill to uh, just, we'll say, um, I don't know what, what would be appropriate um, here. Uh, let me just pick a, a poche 50% fill here. And so now we can see that um, the uh, this tile piece is inset into the wall and clearly can be seen in the section. So depending upon how you're going to apply it, if it's going to be on top of the wall board, it'd be one thing. And if it's going to be on top of the framing um, and sort of inset in like the, you know, next to the wall board, then you might do it this way. So um, uh, hopefully uh, that um, will answer, uh, you know, give some ideas to, the, um, uh, to Melissa in uh, Australia. Uh, I see Heather has a comment with the interior elevation tool. Is there a way to create a continuous interior elevation for a room that is any shape other than a square? Um, and uh, so the answer is that yes, you can do that. So with the interior elevation tool, I go and activate that. We have the option to create any shape we want instead of a rectangle. You can see the geometry method I've just highlighted at the top. And it doesn't have to follow each wall surface. For example, if the room maybe has a jog, let me just pull this wall back um, to here. And then uh, I'll uh, whoops, draw a little jog like this. So we might want to draw um, the interior elevation. Um, well, I could do a rectangle, um, you know, let's say from this corner to that corner, and so it's actually passing beyond that. Or I can do any shape. I can do it with an, you know, an irregular shape. I'll just click on these three points. And instead of going through all the little jogs, I'll just take it all the way down, um, you know, perhaps to be in line with that. And now I've got just three surfaces. Uh, let me get rid of the original elevation that I had um, here. And you can see this particular one is only facing the three sides. And you know maybe that's appropriate because this fourth side is, has no features that we need to show in a drawing. So Heather, um, I hope that answers um, that question that you can actually draw whatever shape you find useful with that polygon thing. You don't have to follow the entire room outline. You can do it manually. Um, let me see. Heather, are you just unmute you? So Heather, are you, are you there again? Or did we? Um, well, I guess you don't have a microphone, so OK. Uh, so uh, the one other thing that just in terms of the 3D, we're looking at tiles that are using material that is built into the library. Question is, how would you get an arbitrary tile pattern that deals with um, creating possibly a custom material, which you can do with uh, by using a texture or picture file? Um, and then the other is creating a custom tile work pattern. In other words, if it's not just not just rectangles, but it's you know hexagons or things, how would you create that? And I think that's beyond what I want to cover today, but uh, I will be covering in that in the course. How do you create custom materials and how do you create custom fill patterns?